Today you're watching Star Television Network on Channel 21. I am Fabian Spill with a news bulletin for the hour. First off, the headlines. The Epilepsy Project Coordinator in Sierra Leone, Dr. Radcliffe Delisk, who is a consultant neurologist at Connaught Hospital, has called on the government and other agencies to pay more attention to epilepsy. In a bid to promote holiday cheer, the manager of Masada has said that with the recent emergence from the Ebola epidemic period, he believes the citizens, especially vulnerable ones, are in need of care now more than ever. And in sports, as part of the post-Ebola recovery, friends of Mosi Fadika in Lumbi have completed their inter-community football competition with Mafa Community crowned as champion against their final counterparts, Wilberforce Community. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. Let's get the currency exchange update. The Epilepsy Project Coordinator in Sierra Leone, Dr. Radcliffe D. Lisk, who is a consultant neurologist at Connaught Hospital, has called on the government and other agencies to pay more attention to epilepsy. Here's the story. According to Dr. Lisk, Sierra Leone does not have a statistic for epilepsy patients, but said, if we are to go by the World Health Organization Africa epilepsy statistic of 1.4% patients, then Sierra Leone with an estimated population of 6 million people should estimate 60,000 epilepsy affected people. Epilepsy is a neurological condition. Essentially, it's a condition in which you have excessive electrical activity in the brain, and that leads on to various types of manifestation. The most common is what we normally call in creole fix, where people fall to the ground, they shake, they foam in the, in the mouth, and sometimes they become incontinent, and they lose consciousness for maybe three, five minutes, and then gradually come around again. And in between these attacks, they are entirely normal. Dr. Lisk said there are different categories of epilepsy and all can be found in Sierra Leone. There's a form of epilepsy called absence seizure. And these tend to occur in children. And basically what happens is that you'll be talking to a child and suddenly the child will just go blank and she'll, or he will stare at you for 10 seconds, 15 seconds and then just snap back to consciousness and continue where they were you know, where you were, where you were talking to them. Um, this, they can have several attacks a day, and the important thing about this is that when they're in school and they get these attacks, they actually get, um, you know, get punished by their teachers because they say they're not paying attention and they're looking somewhere else when the teacher is talking, they're not responding. That type of epilepsy, he said, can be difficult to detect. Dr. Lisk, who is the Epilepsy Project Coordinator in Sierra Leone, said the condition cannot be cured, but again, does not kill, but can lead to an accidental death. For instance, um, if you get an, epilep an epileptic attack, for instance, like women, for instance, when they are cooking, if they get an epilepsy, an epilepsy attack and fall into the fire, an open fire, then that can lead on to fatal consequences. But what causes this condition of epilepsy? Various things. The common factor is that the, uh, the electrical activity in the brain is, is, is for some reason deranged for a very short period of time, maybe a few seconds, a few minutes. But what causes that derangement is usually due to a brain abnormality. Now, this can be an obvious abnormality, like for instance in, in, in children, if they have brain damage from, let's say, meningitis or cerebral malaria, or if they had difficult birth delivery and they didn't breathe, you know, um, readily after they were born, that can sustain brain damage. And later on in life, that can lead on to epilepsy. Also, things like accidents, um, penetrating head injury, closed head, head injury from car accidents, um, can also cause damage that can lead to epilepsy. 
And coming on to adults, and I must also emphasize that epilepsy is not just an illness that affects children and young people. You can get epilepsy at any age. In fact, recently I just, this week in fact, I saw a patient who was 79 years who presented for the first time with epilepsy. In those cases, he said, you have to look for other cases like brain tumor, stroke, and other illnesses that occur in old people. Dr. Lisk went further to say, epilepsy is a serious condition that carries more patients than even HIV AIDS. Therefore, more attention and resources should be put into the epilepsy project. Fibian Swill reporting for Star Television News in Freetown. As part of their corporate social responsibility and to promote holiday cheer, Masada Waste Management has discarded food to vulnerable people around the central parts of Freetown as a needed exercise. Sega Kale has the details and now reports. In a bid to promote holiday cheer, the manager of Masada Waste Management, Jibel Wilson, has said that with the recent emergence from Ebola epidemic period, he believes the citizens, especially vulnerable ones, are in need of care now more than ever. Mr. Wilson made the statement at a food distribution exercise for vulnerable people, including homeless, disabled, beggars and the aged around the central parts of Freetown, including Victoria Park, Bus Stop, Lightfoot Boston Street and Cutting Tree. Speaking to Star TV, Mr. Wilson stated that as a Muslim who believes in charity, especially to less privileged, at a time like this Christmas season, he believes that the people are in more need of basic needs to fill the spirit of cheer and that though the parks contains cooked food and water, to these people who have none and were not expecting it, it counts a lot. He also stated that before this, Masada has been donating in churches at Christmas and in mocks on Islamic holidays, but this year has taken it to the central street of Freetown as they believe this is the best way to get in touch and make them feel cared for. He further explained that though for the time being the exercise is only done in Freetown, this is as a result of the fact that this is their area of operations, but that in the event of expansion into other areas, the exercise will be done in those areas as well. This is something we, I mean, always do. Uh, you know, my family very big on charity, so you know, this is uh, I mean, something we, uh, I mean, always do. So I find and feed um, because of the difficulty that we all man get for people to do something. We will change some people in life. And right now, we the kids are for 250 people. Eh? You know, um, now the different communities and they way we they specifically work with right now. Now we we call, but you know. We will try to extend them as much as we can. One of the recipients expressed gratitude to Masada, saying that no other organization has remembered them so far, and most of them were wondering what they were to eat that day when Masada came with the distribution. She called on other organizations to do similar gestures, as they will really appreciate it. <laughs> For Star Television News, Sarah Kale reporting. You're watching the news on Channel 21 for the hour and still to come in this bulletin. Sports update. As part of the post Ebola, recovery friends of Mosiri Fadika in Lumley have completed their inter-community football competition with Mafa Community crowned as champions against their final counterparts, Wilberforce Community. That will be coming up immediately after the weather forecast. Finally, to round up our news for the hour, let's join our sports correspondent, Hilton John.
Friends of Mosuye Farika in Lomli has completed their inter-community football competition, with 16 communities competed in the competition. The grand final was played between Mafa Community, the host, and River Force Community at the Mafa Community Playing Ground. It was an entertaining performance for either side in encounter, but the host Mafa was excellent to win the championship with a 2 0 victory at the end of the game. According to the chief coordinator of the competition, Tunde Scott, the main objective of this competition is to bring unity amongst the communities and help to develop young talent. He explained more about the outcome of the match. Well, the essence, everybody, see, you see the crowd, Mosi SF come, it take kick off. And I believe, say, waiting been don't sell, now they pay them back. And he come, we support them, and the winner, na the host field, win a mafia best, now they win the trophy and... Uh, we give them the five million, the honor of two million. You get the best player, highest goal scorer, and the best uh, 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 goalkeeper of the tournament. Head coach of the winning team, Alusain Koguma, said he's delighted for the success of his team for short and outstanding performance at the end of the competition. I feel happy. Let me community with this particular trophy. They feel a pain with the vote for their invitation on the national team because when it's a committee of the team, the first set of play are normal. At the moment, we prepare for going to play in the area where they start the 16th next month. I wish for going with them back because I don't say. They don't call me back for go play the entire year. Why is this we are distributed to the various winners in the competition as the champions back home 5 million units, runner up 2 million units? You've been watching the news on Channel 21. I am Phoebe Swill. Thank you for watching and stay with us.